Hello, this is Lynn McCool. Welcome to week two. In this particular unit, we are looking at ethical communication in the business workplace. And again, if you click on the folder, you can access the um, course content for this week, the videos and other activities that you will need to complete. So course content this week includes some readings, but notice that they are very short. So I'm having you read just a couple of pages out of four different chapters here. Um, each one of these readings will define what that item is. So for example, in chapter six, um, pages 81 to 82 define what a problem statement is and so forth, technical description, description of a mechanism, description of a process. And all of these are useful and helpful to you. Uh, the last three are useful and helpful for finishing assignment one and this one right here is helpful for looking ahead towards assignment two. You also have a library research guide which can be found in the left navigation bar of this Blackboard course page. You can see it's right here over on the left and if I were to click on it it would actually take you into that research guide that the Iowa State librarians have put together for you. So take a look around that research guide. It'll be helpful to you as you complete the assignments in the course. You have four different screencasts or videos or PowerPoints to look at this week. So this first one is on um, ethical communication. It's put together by our co-director Joe Makowitz here at Iowa State. Then I have a screencast for you on communication models for technical communication and uh, this is an important screencast because it talks about the way in which we think about communication in the tech comm world. And then finally there are two videos here from our Pro Professional Connections video series and again that series has um, industry leaders who come and give you their insight and their perspective from from the business world what what they're looking for in new hires and how important communication is in the workplace. Your deliverables or activities this week include your discussion board activity which has to do with working through this tutorial how to recognize plagiarism and at the end of the tutorial it should issue you a certificate and so uh, go ahead and print that certificate to a PDF so most of you know how to do that or save it as a PDF and um, then you can just upload the certificate to the discussion board. So you don't really need to comment on each other's posts or anything like that. The discussion board's just a place to house all of the different certificates. And so it'll be easy for me to just look through and see who has completed it and who hasn't. This is an activity that's part of your professionalism grade. I've had um, several questions about the professionalism grade. The professionalism grade is really uh, a catch-all space where um, I can put in points for various little activities like this but I don't want to actually put in a whole brand brand new column in the gradebook for just this particular discussion board activity um, but instead I'm just lumping together all of these little smaller what would have been in-class kinds of activities if we were meeting face-to-face -face. those all get put together underneath that professionalism score. Okay, so that's how that works. Don't forget that you have Learn Smart modules every single week, and this week is no exception, so make sure that you finish your Learn Smart modules by the designated time. I am recommending that you check a couple of days after you complete a Learn Smart module to make sure that Learn Smart and Blackboard are talking with each other as they should. Sometimes they don't. I don't know why it glitches, but occasionally it does. If you find that you have completed a Learn Smart module in the appropriate amount of time and Blackboard did not record it correctly, please email me with your name, the section number that you're in, and um, the specific module name that did not record properly, and I can go ahead and manually make those changes. Finally, your assignment one, the memo assignment, is due on Friday, which is what I'm going to talk about next. Okay, let's talk about the memo assignment that's going to be due at the end of week two. Um, this particular assignment has two purposes. The first purpose is to help you understand better what a technical description is. So that's the first and primary purpose. 
is for you to do a little bit of reading and research and figure out what exactly is a technical description. Um, the second purpose of this memo is to help you begin to communicate in one of the common um, technical communication forms, which is the memo, and if you worked through the screencast from last week on the different genres of communication where I talked about memos, letters, and emails, uh, you have a fairly good understanding, hopefully, of how genres are stable patterns that happen in the workplace, and the memo form is one of those stable patterns that still is hanging around. Even though we have email available to us, memos still are used inside of many companies. And so we're asking that you create a memo in response to this assignment. So your assignment will be written in the memo form, but the content of the assignment has to do with figuring out what is a technical description, okay? So that's the distinction of this assignment. This assignment has several steps to it. The first step says that you're supposed to fi find five or six examples of technical descriptions, and you can do that with that library guide. And you can get to it through this link on the um, assignment page, or you can get to it on that left navigation bar where I showed you just a little bit earlier in the screencast. Remember that you're looking for technical descriptions, so you're not looking for proposals or other genres of business communication. For this particular assignment, you're looking for technical descriptions. So do your search using those keywords. After you've found five or six different examples of technical descriptions, you'll move to step two, which asks you to read those examples and analyze them. The way you go about reading and analyzing the examples is to use these question prompts to help you in your analysis. So let's say that you have found a technical description of a um, particular Apple product. Let's say it's a technical description of an iPhone. You would carefully read through that description, and as you're reading through it, what you want to do is use these questions to consider various aspects of the description. So for example, with an iPhone technical description, who would be the main audience that would uh, be reading this technical description? What is the purpose of it? What kind of content does the iPhone technical description contain? What sorts of evidence or reasoning are appropriate? And what they mean by that is, are there ways in which they have given you data or um, some other kind of, of information to substantiate whatever claims that they're making about that product. So, you know, if they claim that the iPhone is the superior phone on the market, what, what kinds of evidence do they give to support that claim? And then what contextual variables, for example, the audience's familiarity with the topic, affect the kind of data that they include in the reasoning? Now, this has to do with, you know, how um, well-informed do they believe the audience is when they write that technical description. So is this an audience that has really high technical expertise in this particular product or in this particular process? Or is this an audience who doesn't have very much experience or expertise in this at all? Depending upon the, the level of understanding of the audience will depend upon the kind of information and the way that it's written those things will change depending upon audience. And so that's what they're talking about when they say contextual variables. Those things that the writer is assuming or um, knows about the target audience. As you're analyzing then, you'll want to take notes, and I would suggest that you use either a Word document or a Google document, but take notes, try to answer each one of these questions for each one of the different examples that you find. After you have then analyzed those five or six um, different technical descriptions, what you want to do is then go back through and look across each one of these categories. That's basically what each one of these questions does. It actually creates a category. So you could have a category titled audience, one titled purpose, content, evidence or reasoning, and contextual variables. And as you're looking at your five to six different examples, what you're wanting to see is 
what sort of common thread runs through each one of those examples. So for example, let's take the, the category of audience. Let's say that you have a technical description of an iPhone, of a thermometer, of a vacuum cleaner, and of a, um, a, a tablet. Okay, You have a technical description of each one of those things. If you're to think about audience with each one of those various products, the one commonality that you're going to see among all the different technical descriptions is that each one of those descriptions is written for a specific audience in mind. Now there may be other commonalities that you're seeing among those different technical descriptions depending upon the content and the way that they're written. But that's what you're looking for. Okay, So take one, each one of these questions, turn it into a category, find, find the patterns that are occurring um, in, the, in the various examples that you have and, and uh, include that on your notes page. Okay, So you're going to add those patterns that you see on the notes page. Alright, then you'd move to step three. Uh, sorry, that was step three. Um, then you would move to step four. And um, in step four then, what you're going to do is identify evidence. So with your list of patterns or commonalities in front of you, go back to your examples of technical descriptions and highlight details from the examples that you can use as evidence in support of those patterns or commonalities. So for example, it's not just good enough for me as a writer to say, well, all of my technical descriptions were written for a specific audience. Okay, how do I know that's true as a reader? So the way that I would know that that's true as a reader is that you, the writer, would give me some specific quotations or some specific um, instances from those examples. So you might say, each one of my five technical descriptions that I analyzed was written to a specific audience. For example, the iPhone description was written for the Apple enthusiast. This was evident to me because I saw, and then I would quote something from the text that would demonstrate why this particular um, technical description was written for the Apple enthusiast, and then move on with the rest of um, my description there. Okay, so that's what I mean when I'm talking about identify evidence here. You want to use actual little bits of quotations from the technical description to support statements that you're making. Okay, step five says that once you've done all your research and you've collected all this information on your notes page, then what you want to do is go to Microsoft Word and choose one of the memo templates. And uh, if you use the memo templates, one of those in Word, it's really easy to set up. Now, obviously, you can set up your own memo template. If you're using Google Docs, you can just look at a standard um, memo template like the one that I showed you in um, the screencast from last week. So you could make your own if you wanted to, but using Word is really simple and easy. So that's what I suggest. After you've chosen your template, then go to step one of drafting your memo. After you've drafted that, make sure that you take a look at step two, refer to any sources of your examples, use those in your sentences. You can see the example um, sentence here, how they have set that up. You could use that as a pattern. Step three is to revise and proofread. And then finally, step four would be to save your document. And I do ask that you save it as a PDF and upload it to Blackboard. Notice also that with your upload of your final memo, you should also include a Works Cited Reference section at the end and your Analysis Notes page that you created while you were researching and analyzing this assignment. So this assignment in its final form will include the memo, a Works Cited or Reference section that details um, where you found your technical descriptions, and then your Analysis Note page, your working notes that you created as you were doing your analysis. Okay. Uh, that's all for now, and um, I will visit with you again later about the rubric for Assignment 1. Thanks.